we'll try to, um, I'll try my very best to move through this as quickly as we can, get us, get us back on schedule. Um, I guess this is the, uh, Josh, I think the ninth year, I think this is the ninth year that we've done this, the Georgia Quality Cotton Awards. And for those of you that are, that are not familiar with it, let me very briefly give you an idea of what we're doing. We divide the state up into four regions. And you can see what those regions are here. And we invite gins in each of these four regions to make a nomination. And um, you make a nomination in three acreage categories, less than 500 acres, 500 to 1,000, and then over 1,000. Um, these awards are sponsored by Bayer Crop Science and the Georgia Cotton Commission, and certainly want to thank them uh, for their sponsorship and their efforts in uh, helping with this. But um, we invite gins in each of these four regions to make a nomination of um, what is the highest, what's the best quality cotton that you've got in your gin in these three different acreage categories. And we invite those nominations and then we award uh, in each region the best cotton in each of these uh, acreage categories. Before I get into telling you what our, uh, who our winners are this, this year, and, and um, we have 11 winners, I wanted to give you some idea of about where these growers are relative to the state. And uh, in each of the graphs I'm fixing to show you, this shows you the average for the state of Georgia. For example, for this year's cotton crop, about 50% of the crop graded a color 31 or better. That was the state average, about 50%. That's represented by the red line there. The green bars are the, the color grades, the percent of the color grade of these nominations and the uh, winners, the, the color grade for the, for the 11 winners. And you can see that we had almost everybody was, that, that won this year was 90% or better in color 31, that compares to only 50% of the crop state average. Staple length, the average staple length on the crop this year was 36. All of our nominations with the exception of one was at that or better. Most of our cotton, most of these winters were 36 and a half to close to 37. Uh, we had one, one of our winters that was close to 38. Uh, as far as a staple length goes. Uniformity, this is something that we've really improved in statewide as a, as a group of growers over the past uh, three or four years. Seen a lot of improvement here. Our state average uniformity was just under 82, 81.8 this year. And uh, again, you can see most of our winners were at least the state average or better, we had one that was almost 80, 82 and a half. That's your average length, uh, your fiber length uniformity. Fiber strength, strength is also something that has improved in uh, recent years. We had a state average of almost 30 in strength this year. You can see where the winners, the, most of the winners did not fall, they, they kind of fell below the state average. We had two that were right at the state average, but we had one that had an average uh, fiber strength of 32 and a half. Really, really strong. And uh, that one stood out, as you can see, far and above the rest of the nominations. Micronair, we had over 20% of the crop this year that graded high in mic. And if you look at these winners, the highest one was just under 10%. Most of them had no high micronaire at all. So uh, our winners as a whole, as a group, certainly did not have any trouble with micronaire. But a lot of growers apparently did, obviously, because almost a fourth of the crop statewide got, got discounted for high mic. Extraneous matter. 
We didn't have the problem this year that we had last year. Uh, guy, I was trying to remember what the uh, bark was. I think was it. I think we had about 12 or 13 percent of our crop last year statewide that got deducted for bark. We had some of that problem this year, but not nearly what we had last year. We had a little over five five percent of the crop statewide that got uh, deducted for extraneous matter. Most of that bark. Um, we only had one grower that really had a, a, a big problem with bark. The rest of them, as far as the winters go, that was not a problem. Didn't even register. They had zero discounts for bark. With that, I'll move into um, getting the awards. I'm going to ask Josh, if you would, um, if you and Richie would come up and stand here and um, give these out as they call as I, as I call them out. Um, we start with region one there, and then we move back this way toward region four. You've got the grower plaques in the front, and then the gin plaques in the back there. And uh, starting there, with, we'll start with region one and then come this way with region four. And I hope, hope and trust I've got them in order. I think I do. In region one, in the uh, less than 500 acre category. The winner was uh, Rusty Irvin of Turner County. And uh, this was a joint uh, nomination by South Central Gin and Scania's Gin. Uh, South Central, I believe I saw Mark here. Mark Peel is here. Anybody here from Scania's? Is Tim or Rhonda here? Somebody from Scania's? If y'all would come up. Yes. Okay, when we get through with everything here, if y'all would um, meet outside and we'll, we'll have the pictures taken. Let me get my eyeballs back in. Okay, in the um, over a thousand acre category, uh, this is a repeat winner from last year. As a matter of fact, I think uh, Ben, I think, has won this award several times before. Uh, just a really outstanding grower. Uh, in the over a thousand acre category, the winner was SOS Farms out of Turner County, and that was Jen at Araby Jen. Is Ben, Ben Shivers or Gary Oliver here? <clears throat> Thank y'all. Congratulations. Okay, moving over to uh, Region 2. In the less than 500 acre category, uh, I don't believe Stephen's here, but the winner was Stephen Nickel from Jefferson County. And uh, that cotton was ginned at Midville Warehouse. And the uh, county agent over in Jefferson County is Pamela Sapp. I believe Ralph Sandiford's here from Midville Warehouse. Ralph? Yeah. Yeah. Ralph, you can take Stephen the plaque if you would. <clears throat> okay, in the uh, 500 to 1,000 acre category, the winner was Alton Walker from Burke County. That cotton was ginned at Bryant's Incorporated, and the county agent there in Burke County is Peyton Sapp. Is Mel, Mel Kirk or somebody here from uh, Bryant's? Okay. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. In the um, more than 1,000 acre, greater than 1,000 acre category in Region 2, uh, this cotton was also uh, ginned at Bryant's Incorporated, the majority of it, and uh, the grower is Dean Johnson from Burke County. Congratulations, Dean. Okay, moving down to Region 3. Less than 500 acres. This grower won in this category last year. As a matter of fact, he, uh, he won the best cotton in the state award last year. And uh, wins, wins again this year. Uh, in the less than 500 acre category, the winner is Ronnie Corson out of Lanier County, and uh, that cotton was ginned at BCT. Steve is here from B representing BCT. Congratulations, guys. Five hundred to a thousand acres. The winner there was Thomas Southall from Lowndes County, and uh, this cotton was also ginned at BCT. More than a thousand acres. This grower has uh, won this award in either this acreage category or the 500 to 1,000 acres category, I think at least on two previous occasions, and um, continues to, to show up in the nominations and, and continues to win. But uh, the grower here in Region 3 with more than 1,000 acres, uh, the winner is uh, River Bottom Farms, Kevin Shaw, uh, Lanier County, and again, BCT Gin was the gin. Jessica's going to accept it for him. Congratulations. Tell Kevin congratulations. Okay, Region 4, which is the uh, southwest corner of the state. Less than 500 acres. The winner is Aldine Hart from Cockwood County, and that cotton was ginned at BCT. Uh, BCT Gen at Berlin. Congratulations, guys. In the 500 to 1,000 acre category, the winner was uh, Creek Bank Farms. Terry Pickle out of Miller County, and that cotton was ginned at uh, Cloverleaf Gin. I believe Scott Mitchell's here from the gin. Is Terry here, Scott? Okay. Congratulations. I hadn't seen Terry in quite a while. Tell him congratulations. In the more than a thousand acre category, the winner is Brian Rayburn from Thomas County, and uh, that cotton was also ginned at BCT Gin at Berlin. Congratulations, Brian. Okay, we've got uh, one more award. Every year we, uh, starting two or three years ago, we started giving out an award that we called Best Cotton. Out of all the nominations and of all the winners that we had, uh, this is the cotton that stood over and above everybody else. And uh, we call this the Best Cotton Award. This uh, 
This cotton had a loan value of 57 and a half cents. That's a nickel and a half premium per pound. 95% of this cotton graded color 21. Not 31, not 41, Fred, but 21. 95% of this crop graded color 21 or better. In other words, that cotton's so bright you've got to put your shades on. The average staple of this cotton was 36 and a half, but more importantly, 56% of this crop was staple 37 or better. The uniformity was 82 and the strength was 29 and a half. And none of that cotton was discounted for Mike or had any bark problems or anything else. Just a really, really outstanding crop in terms of, um, of quality and frankly, out of all the years that we've been doing this, certainly one of the better, if not the best, cotton that we've had come through here. And uh, both the Jenner and the grower will get a plaque. The best cotton goes to Stephen Nickel out of Jefferson County, and that cotton was ginned at Midville Warehouse. Stephen couldn't make the trip. That's a long haul from, from Jefferson County over here, but Ralph, please give him our congratulations. Thank, thank you to Stephen and to, and, to, and to the gin. That's going to wrap it up for me. Uh, Richie, if, if you and Josh would like to make some comments, we'll be glad to have those. Josh, okay. I, don't, I got an announcement I want to make. We just appreciate everybody's involvement. Uh, <clears throat> The Cotton Commission, as well as the University of Georgia, for letting Bear participate, and uh, just to recognize the growers that really, in the kind of season we had, there's a lot of varieties now that have really exceptional quality. If you look at University of Georgia data, uh, but this is just a testimony of, of how you've managed it, how you defoliated, and, and when you picked it, and all those different small decisions that came into play. So, congratulations and. Wish you guys God bless y'all on a 2014 season. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, several years ago, uh, we had a really difficult quality situation. Uh, things got a little bit out of hand. Uh, Bayer joined with us and the university to establish this type of, of a program to show folks we could grow quality cotton and it'll run as well as anybody's anywhere and uh, uh, we're proud to be a part and particularly proud of the strides that we made in delivering a good good amount of cotton uh, in view of that I want Fred Powell and Van Murphy to step up here they got a little announcement they are some, something that they've come upon that they'd like to share with you won't be but a minute Yeah, uh, thank y'all. If y'all would bear with us just a minute, and we've we've talked about quality in cotton, and uh, this is a good time to talk about this. But uh, it's concerning plastic. Uh, you know, we've gone to the plastic rolls of modules, and uh, the National Cotton Council has done a research on that, and we've got some contamination. But to find out, that's really not our biggest problem with contamination. The biggest problem is the black plastic behind produce and uh, you know we just felt like this was a good opportunity we had growers here together to talk about it uh, but Fred's got a real case that's just been brought to his attention and I want him to share with you what that what that amounts to if we had uh, this past year we had one bale that had some in it but we had another the year before and of course we bought the bale back well this year in 2013, which was from the 2012 crop, we had eight bales, and it was two different growers. One of them did not, does not even grow produce, but uh, that plastic can get in the gin and can turn loose later into someone else's cotton. And you have to, now we have this permanent bale ID, so they can track it back to that specific bale. But uh, we got a bill for two different growers this past year, and I know of two other gins that did the, got the bills also. But with the black plastic, with more of the produce, you can, you can have it, it can stay on that ground. It's biodegradable, but if you set that module down, it can stay there for 
two or three years and the module truck is going to pick it up. And actually we had some that came into a module and it was about a foot off the ground, so the fan sucked that up. But we all need to be more aware because this is going to be a growing problem, I feel like, and, and we have so much produce in, in South Georgia that we're going to see more and more of this. And like I said, with a permanent bail ID, we need to be more conscientious as, as producers where we set that module and, and doing a better job of getting that plastic out of the field. But uh, it's like I said, I know of one gin that's, that's been charged three years in a row with black plastic in there. And, uh, and it's like I said, I think it's going to be continue to be a problem and most of it's going overseas and you don't, you can't go and inspect anything overseas. But anyway, I just, I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention about the plastic before it gets to be even a bigger problem and, uh, and address it as soon as we can when we start harvesting. Thanks, gentlemen. I'm afraid this is a problem that's been coming up. I had an opportunity to go to a meeting in New Orleans a few weeks ago about it, and um, in a group of producers, manufacturers, end users, and scientists, it came out as is is one of the major issues that that we do have to deal with. And at this point, we just all need to be careful and be as mindful as we can to pick it up. You know. Folks grow produce, that's a business too, and uh, we just gonna all have to be more careful. And uh, one of the gentlemen at the meeting made a progress, uh, made a comment that he worked in, a, worked in Australia in the outback for continental uh, gin equipment. And he said he goes out to this gin and said it, about every five minutes a car would come by the road. And the guy had a fence all on the front of his property. Now this is a road like some of us live on that don't many folks come down it that you don't know who it is. And ask him what he put that fence up for. He said keep plastic bags out. So no matter where you are and what your location is, it's a problem. Thanks everyone for coming, everybody that helped make this meeting successful. And those of you, the winners, the Jenners and whatever, if y'all come back up here, we need to get some pictures and uh, uh, we wish you safe travels on the way home. Thank you. <laughs>